Let's take a look at something in QGIS that can be pretty baffling if you don't know what you're doing. So here's the scenario. I have a points layer on my screen and these points happen to be located in South Sudan. So I've got 10 points in South Sudan. And what I would like to do is draw a one kilometer buffer around these points. So to do that, I could go to vector, geo processing tools and then buffer. I usually just click on the processing toolbox button and type in buffer. It's easier to find it that way for me. And then I'll go to the vector geometry section and buffer and I'll double click the buffer tool. The buffer tool will open and I can see the points layer that I want to buffer and I want to do one kilometer, but I notice there's a warning sign and it says degrees and there's a little warning symbol. And if I hover over it, it says distances in geographic degrees, consider reprojecting to a projected local coordinate system for accurate results. Now, if you're not used to this, you might think, what the heck does that mean? Well, a little explainer is in order. So the data set, the points layer on the left is in degrees and if you look at the two images on screen on the left, the line of latitude and line of longitude, the reason this is an issue when we're doing things based on distance is because if you look at the lines of latitude, the distance between lines of latitude is not perfectly equal throughout the globe, but it's almost the case. So they're about 111 kilometers apart. That's about 69 miles. But if you look at the lines of longitude, the distance between these degrees, so these are lines of longitude, but you can think of these as decimal degrees, for example. So the distance between these lines is less between, you know, in the northern latitudes or the southern latitudes. At the equator, the gap between these lines is greatest. So when we're doing buffers, we shouldn't use degrees. And that's why you get the warning sign. So I'll close this. And I'm not going to run the buffer now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on the layer to go to layer properties. You can also right click and choose properties, but I like to double click. And then in the information section, I will look at the coordinate reference system and I can see EPSG 4326WGS84 and the units here is the important thing. It's geographic, it's not projected in meters. It uses latitude and longitude for coordinates, which is fine for plotting things on the map. So these points are in the right place. But if I want to do analysis like a buffer, I'll need to use projected data and ideally in this case in meters. So how I would do that is I'll just right click the point and I'll go to export and then save features as. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to the file name section and I'm going to click on the three dots and save this to a folder and I'm going to call the file, uh, I'll give it a new name. So in this case, I'm going to call this points projected. You can call it whatever you like, but I'm just doing this to remind myself that these are the projected points. Click save. You don't need to change a layer name, but I like to make sure it matches the file name. The key thing here is the CRS section. At the moment it's this 4326. Now you do have a choice of different coordinate reference systems. If you click on the button to select CRS, you'll see a number of choices. I've, I've already searched for the Sudan, for Sudan ones. <coughs> Pardon me. What you usually get is this filter box. And at this point you might think, well, what coordinate reference systems should I choose? I'll type in Sudan here. And in this case, I do know that UTM zone 35 North is a good option. Now, if you're in doing this for someone else in the world, you can search for the location. In this case, Sudan is what I'm using. But the key thing is it's in the projected coordinate system section. And I'm going to click on this one again and the units are in meters. So instead of being degrees of latitude and longitude, it's in meters. So that's good. 
I'm going to choose this one and click OK. Make sure it says the one I just chose, fine. And when I click OK, it will export these points and add them as a new layer. It won't look any different, but let's see what happens when we try to buffer it. So I'll turn the original layer off and we'll go to the buffer section. I'll double click buffer. And now we don't have that exclamation point warning. We've got this distance in meters. I'm going to type in one and change it from meters to kilometers. Something I always do by mistake is accidentally generate a one meter buffer when I mean to do kilometers. So make sure before you hit run, the units are right. The segment section basically describes how smooth your circle is. If it's a buffer around a point, it's going to be a circle. So I usually choose 50 to make it nice and smooth. Other options, you can read on the right hand side what they do. If you are buffering multiple points and you want them to be merged into one big shape, you can tick dissolve result. But in this case, I want a separate circle around each point. So I'm not going to dissolve results. I'm going to click on this browse button to save to a geo package. So I'm saving the buffers to a new layer. If you don't do that, it will still work, but the layer will be a temporary layer and it'll disappear unless you save it manually after you turn QGIS off. So I'll choose to save to geo package and I'll call this one points buffered. Again, I like to give my layer name the same name as the file name. The only reason I do that is it just looks neater in the layers panel. That's all. So I'll click OK, make sure it's one kilometer and I'll hit run. It'll be really quick. And then I'm going to click close. And what I'll do is I'll just drag and drop my points layer on top. Now, if I wanted to repeat that, but say use five kilometers, I could run through it again, but the quick way, this is why I like the processing toolbox, the quick way is to click the clock button. I'll click the clock button because that remembers what you've done. It's the processing history. So I'll just double click the buffer tool and all the options are the same, but I'm just going to, well, it changes it to meters, but it's, it's fine. It's 1000 meters. Let's just change it to 5000 and I'll just save this to geo package. I'll call this points buffered and I'll change the name to 5km. It's good practice to put in the file name anyway, what exactly your file contains. So let's save that and click OK and we'll run this and we'll get a 5,000 meter buffer. So a five kilometer buffer. I'll hit run and close and I'll close that history. And then I can reorder my layers. So let's put the points layer on top and I'll close this panel and I'll zoom to these layers. So that's how you can easily do that. That's how you can buffer it. If you wanted just to create a quick visual buffer, a little trick here, if I go to the point projected layer and symbology, if I just want to create a visual buffer, so no new buffer layer polygon, like I just did, I'll go to where it's a simple marker or here in symbology, I'll click the plus and in symbol layer type, I'll choose geometry generator. I'll change the geometry type to polygon. And then this little button here, I'll click it. And what I'm doing here is I'm using a little expression to draw a buffer. So I'll just type in buffer here. The nice thing is if you just take the time to read the options on the right, you can get more information. But for now, I'll double click buffer. So we're going to buffer the geometry. The geometry in this case is points. We'll put in a comma. We'll put in the distance, which is, let's do 10,000 because it's meters. And remember, we, we know it's 10,000 because our data set is in meters. That's the units. Segments, I'm going to do 50 to make it a nice smooth circle. The other things are optional. So we'll close the brackets. We'll click OK and we'll click Apply. We do get the circles on top of the point. So in simple marker, I'm going to select it and just click the Up button 
to move that to the top and then I'll click apply. And then for the simple fill of the polygon buffer, I'm just going to click the color patch and just make it a little bit or quite a lot transparent. So that's, uh, that's not created a new layer. It's just a visual tool using geometry generator, which can be quite useful. So there we go. Let's turn these on. That's how to deal with this issue of when you're trying to buffer something and you go to the buffer tool and you see that degree warning. You need to make sure your layer is correctly projected before you do it. Doing it with degrees will not be the right way to do it. Okay, so hopefully that's useful and it saves you a little bit of confusion and pain in the future.